What's up everybody? I'm at you with a little bit of a Dark Souls tutorial video. Not really on how to play the game better, but how to grind. That's something that I don't see many people learning really how to do, nor what your objectives are, where to go, how good they are, how safe it is, because here's the thing, I judge grinding not on how many souls you can get, but how safe the grinding is. And early game, it starts you off with a great setup to help you grind. This is the first area you go to, and that is why it is the first grinding spot that I chose. Why? Not because of souls received, not because of like any mysteri mysterious item you can get, but because of the drops that you can sell, and the fact that it is safe once you get a little bit of a jump. Now, it's recommended you're in this level up to 22, level 22, and that's the level I am right now. I actually think I'm around level 23 or 24, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit of a grinder here, but this area is where I got the Silver Serpent Ring, that is right, I'm going to include a picture right there, and that is the ring that you want, 20,000 souls buys the key, but, to Firelink Shrine, I should probably finish that thought first, but we're going to go right in here, this area takes around 3 minutes, and it gets you 1,462 souls without that ring, but with the ring it gives you 1,600 souls. Now, again, not a great place to grind in terms of souls received, but it is safe and a great place to grind for that key, so future grinding is a lot easier. How many times do I say grinding in this video? But, <clears throat> you may have noticed that I skipped the little tower with the Puss of Man. Don't worry, I will be going back to it because it can add souls to your account, to your account and it gets you some of the items that I'm about to list off. The items that are available to you that uh, you can sell for more souls, which is why I say it is roughly 1600 souls because this is just enemies it is not including the enemy i'm sorry the items that you can sell but some of the drops include the deserter armor set titanite shard embers great axe broken straight sword straight sword round shield light crossbow a raw gem a firebomb and standard bolts those are common drops from these enemies now you can take those and sell them now the broken straight sword it's three souls it's not worth it if you get it just trash it but some of these others, they, they, you can sell them for quite a bit. I know people don't like it and they get mad at when I say it, but you can sell an ember for a thousand souls. That's really good early game. You're not using a lot of embers early game. Especially since I'm going to be showing you another area in this exact location that will give you a ton of embers. And the reason I also mention this is because of the dragon that you just saw. It is fantastic. Why is it fantastic, you might ask? That dragon will get you around 500 souls that you don't even have to touch. You just literally stand there and he kills them for you. But you come down here, you kill these last two guys, and that's the full run. Because the next thing you have to do is, ki is uh, kill this guy and go back to the bonfire. But I'm going to switch it over real quick and I'm going to take you guys over to the Puss of Man. He's an interesting guy. I know I said he's an uh, interesting man, but the Puss of Man is actually a pain in the ass. Either you kill this guy or you let him morph into this giant fuck. That's exactly what I like to call him as, so here's the problem here. With the Puss of Man, it gets you an extra 470 souls by killing all the enemies around him. Whoopsie daily. Without it, it's 228. He morphs, he gets you more. His item drop also increases. Here's the problem, though. He has a rare chance of dropping an Ember and a Titanite Shard. That's the only reason why Ember's even made it. I recommend grinding around here, but, you know, then again, if you don't want to, you don't have to. It's not that much of a difference. See, he drops a Titanite Shard either way, but... You just get more souls either way, but to the next area! Alright guys, this next area, just a little bit of a break here, is not really a grinding spot in the sense. It is a grinding spot because you need to practice this knight. He sucks. But the next area does have a few knights because they drop amazing stuff. Now he about killed me, that's gonna be another review. Re review. How about we take another look at that and we try this guy again? All right, round two, motherfucker. And I know how to time you this time, you bastard. Battle up. up. And it's out of the park. That's what we wanted to see. But what we got to do is you just got to come back over here. He gets back up. Thank you now. Alrighty, and right after you defeat Vort of the Boreal Valley, you're going to want to use that bonfire to just kind of use for, uh, as a base for this next area. This is probably going to be one of the better grinding spots in terms of safety, item drop, and above all else, souls that you're going to see for quite a while. 
Now I do want to make a note that in 10 minutes through if you run the entire wall of Lothric area with the serpent ring, you can get about 10,000 souls. I don't recommend doing that. A, it's 10 minutes and it's only 10,000 souls, but this area alone gives you about 2,000 with the ring. To be specific, it gives you 2,217 uh, 2, souls with the ring. Without the ring, it's only 2,010. But still pretty good. Now, if you notice that when they put their shields up, the knights are very easy to shield break, especially with the deep battle axe. I'm using the refined one, however, but if you have a deep battle one, it just cuts right through them because it's always dark magic. Use this as a time to practice parrying. These enemies don't deal a lot of damage if you've got a decent amount in health. And it's a really good time to practice uh, parrying for later, bra for later areas, grinding, and then more specifically PvP. But some of the items you can get here are the Deserter Armor Set, Light Crossbow, Titanite Shard, Ember, Straight Sword, uh, the Raw Gem, Fire Bomb, and Standard Bolts. You can also get the Knight's full set of armor, the Knight Sword, which is the Straight Knight Sword, the Lothric Knight Spear, the Knight Shield, and you can get from this guy, I didn't drop anything that time. Oh, and isn't, that's the wrong knight, too. Uh, from the Fat Knight, you can sometimes get a Blessed Gem, and you can also get his Halberd. I do not recommend fighting the Fat Knight, because A, he does massive damage, or at least until you're a higher damage build. He's right over there. But if you come up here, and then you just kill these two guys, zap, one hit. I two-hand the weapon, mostly. This guy, I try to practice parrying a little bit. I fail a lot. But this area is a pretty safe area to practice parrying. I think I said parrying twice, but that's all right. This area is a safe place to practice parrying, and I highly recommend you use this because it is one of the better spots of this area. Well, guys, that is all the time we have for today. I'm Mr. Dylan, a.k.a. the RC, Raging Caucasian. I will see you on the next video. These videos do take a little bit of time, but I do hope that, uh, I just hope I helped you out. I will be covering every single area, and I will find an area for grinding in every single area. But I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good day, and thank you all for watching. Peace.